Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to my channel. This is a pick a card reading focusing on messages from your spirit animals. And you can basically take that idea of spirit animals as deeply as you like. Maybe this animal turns out to be your spirit animal that you work with, you know, for an extended period of time, possibly years or your entire life. Or it, this could just be a message relevant for you today. You know, maybe over the next few days you see this animal popping up in different places and it's relevant to you for a short amount of time. Either way, you know, run with this as deeply as you like, and I think I'd like to get right into the reading. So go ahead and pick your card. It's just one, two, and three, and the timestamps are down below. Hey, Pile One, welcome to your reading. You guys got this beautiful peacock card, and the subtext on it is prosperity. Let's see if I can zoom in on it so you can get a closer look. Okay, so in the West, the first thing we think about when we think of peacocks is vanity, right? We almost even have a negative feeling around peacocks as somebody who's put in a lot of energy for something that is entirely frivolous or is just trying to attract attention. But there's a lot more going on here with the peacock than that kind of surface level judgment calls on it, right? The, the peacock is actually the national bird of India and is really involved uh, in Hinduism. For example, Shiva rides a peacock into battle. And I think Krishna wears a peacock feather in his hat, something like that. So if you look deeper into the tradition of the peacock, where the peacock comes from in India, then it's not it's not just about vanity. And that's why prosperity is the subtext here. You know, it's not it's not vanity, it's prosperity, it's abundance. It's, I think, being able to channel your energy into into wealth and luxuriousness and also putting yourself out there in a way that is beautiful, but is also purposeful. Like this peacock energy to me is really bringing in abundance so that you and everybody around you can have a better life. And there's actually, I think there's traditions where people keep peacock feathers in their house and you know, pe people use peacock feathers in spells in order to attract abundance and increase their prosperity. So if you feel like, you know, running out and buying a peacock feather, um, if there's any farms around your place, like peacock farms, a lot of like small farms will have a few, uh, like some peafowl, right? And you can go up up there and get, you know, a big, long, uh, beautiful peacock feather for pretty cheap. You know, if you buy them online, you're gonna be paying through the nose. And uh, I actually know of a farm where I live, they sell peacock feathers as like toys for cats. <laughs> um, your cat might enjoy a peacock feather. If you can find one that's not too expensive, it's good because they like to chew on it. Um, but anyway, uh, into the cards here, I really think this uh, peacock energy is telling you that whatever you've been working on and you guys have been working on something, it is about to pay off and it's really going to be increasing your your livelihood. Like this is a really positive message here, although there is a, I think something you need to address. So let's take a look here. We got the two of pentacles, the four of swords, in reverse and strength so the two of pentacles you've been juggling something you've been working on something and maybe you were taking off you bit off more than you can chew you didn't know if you could handle all of it i feel like somebody has been like going to school and like working like all at the same time um you know like maybe working quite a lot while going to school or taking a full course course load and still working 20 hours a week like that, somebody's been doing a lot um, juggling, I feel like two different areas of your life, trying to keep it all intact. <laughs> I'm really reminded of, uh, you know, George from Seinfeld. Do you guys remember that episode where he's talking about the worlds colliding? Like he has like the friend world and the relationship world and he likes to keep them completely separate. Like he doesn't like his girlfriend meeting his friends because those are two separate spheres, two worlds. And as soon as his girlfriend meets his friends, the worlds are colliding. And of course, in like George style, he's all like freaking out about it. <laughs> uh, that's sort of what I feel here with this this two of swords. You guys had two separate things going on. Uh, I mean, shit, maybe it was even like two different groups of friends uh, that you knew wouldn't really get along, but that you resonate with really strongly. And you're trying to figure out how do you spread yourself out uh, amongst those two, those two worlds. It's, I, I really feel like this is a, a, a two worlds energy. Let's see this little guy. This guy looks kind of stressed out. He's got too much going on. 
too much going on. And this has been taking its toll on you, Four of Swords, in reverse. Here's the Four of Swords upright. We got this owl just kind of chilling, but you guys are upside down. The Four of Swords upside down to me always means that you haven't been taking the time out that you need. You know, you, you need to be taking some kind of deep rest in order to process everything that's been happening to you, but you, you guys haven't done it yet. And you're probably starting to feel like all of this juggling, this two of pentacles juggling is like taking its toll. And you're starting to, I think you're starting to feel like you don't want to keep it up anymore. Maybe even though the worlds are going to collide, you're almost willing to let that happen because you need to like find find some unity, find some some peace and to just let it all like you're ready to drop the balls. Not not really in a bad way, but you're ready to stop juggling. And final card here, strength. Here we have a, a swan riding a lion, but this lion looks almost canine to me. I don't know if the, the like creator of the deck intended it this way. This is the other kin deck where all the animals uh, are like hybrid animals. And so this swan is, you know, riding and holding on this onto this lion with some reins. And we have the infinity sign up top there. In this case, I think you guys, you guys are the swan because you've been managing to tame this lion with kind of like your sheer force of will with your inner strength, with your ability to just keep it all together. Like imagine how difficult it would be to ride a lion, especially if you're a swan, right? That lion could just snap your neck like like nothing, but you guys have been doing it. it it's so much like this uh, two of pentacles, but it would also be exhausting. Even if you're taming this lion in this gentle fashion, you know, with your inner strength that eventually like saps your, it saps your, like your life force, your energy levels, it's hard to keep putting that out. And while well, you guys have had the strength to do it, and I think you could almost keep doing it indefinitely, but I'm really feeling like you just, you don't want to. And that's be really because of this four of swords in the middle here. Um, but all of this coming up with this peacock card up top, I would say be really, have a really positive outlook about how everything is gonna unfold. The peacock is really signaling an increase in abundance and an increase in prosperity. So maybe if you actually let the worlds collide, that'll be bringing in like alchemizing everything and giving you that fresh start and a sense of security and a sense of well-being that you've been looking for. And I really feel like that will come if you can let let the worlds collide, bring together these two separate energies. <laughs> I just remembered what I said at the beginning about how uh, Shiva rides a peacock into battle, <laughs> which that's also kind of like a juggling energy. And it's like this swan riding this lion. You guys have been like riding a bull. You guys have been riding a bull and like, but between between two different forces. So really, I think the peacock wants you to stop juggling, drop the balls, let the worlds collide. And that might be like chaotic for a bit, but once the dust settles, you're gonna be feeling like a peacock. You know, you're gonna be able to shake your tail feathers and that this peacock is going to be bringing in increased abundance. And I think I would just like to top this off with a moon card. Let me pull it out here. Emotions are running high. Super moon. <laughs> That's right, guys. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what to say about that. That's just perfect. Like you guys have been running around all over the place, emotionally charged, I think balancing emotionally charged situa situations and 
I'm feeling like a little bit of like manic energy coming in with the super moon. And, you know, I was just going to plop this down on top of the four of swords. So you guys need to take a nap. Take a time out. Take a nap. Trust that the peacock has your back and that you are going to be growing your peacock feathers. I think I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Uh, good luck with the collision of your worlds, and I hope to see you again soon. Hey, pal two, welcome to your reading. Your cards are magical. There's no other way to put it. You have cat with intuition. Let me just let you take a look at this. Beautiful black cats. I love this card because I have two black cats. They're fluffier than these guys, but you know. Oh, wow, there's actually three cats here. How did I never notice that before? I, I, <laughs> I, I literally never noticed the eyes at the bottom here. Wow, that it was like, I don't, I don't know. That was weird. I, I've looked at this card a lot. I've drawn a lot for myself and it, it literally, it was like these eyes like popped out at me. That, that was creepy. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how I never noticed that before. So you have cat with intuition, the magician, knight of swords in reverse and the world. This is just, it's, it's sparkly with, with feminine magic. This is a very feminine spread. <sighs> okay. Anytime this intuitive cat card pops up, you guys are being called to lean in like really deeply into your, into your intuition, into your magic, into your psychic abilities, uh, into going with the flow. There's also an element of with these cats of communicating with spirits, um, passed on loved ones, ghosts, uh, even just, you know, interdimensional beings, whatever, you know, whatever you're into, however your beliefs skew, you guys are going to be receiving messages from other dimensions or the other side, however you view that. And, but not just that, you're being called to really embody this kind of magic with the magician here. The magician uses the four elements around her. She uses tools based in the four elements in order to manipulate energies and to cast her spells. I really think that, like if I ever get to make a tarot deck, which I don't know how I would do that since I'm not an artist, but I would love to, I would call the magician the witch. To me, the magi magician is such such beautiful witchy energy and i absolutely love seeing it come up with these black cats because obviously you know stereotypically we associate black cats with witches um maybe you guys uh are witches if you practice witchcraft or your wiccans or some other kind of pagan however you associate yourselves or if you're not maybe you're thinking about getting into it maybe you've been reading books about witchcraft maybe you've been looking into your your lineage and finding that there are witches in your history. You guys, I feel, absolutely have ancestors who were witches. Um, and in different different cultures, you know, they might not be like a witch, as in, you know, a witch, witch is like European sort of, right? There were witches in cultures all around the world. We just might not think of them as, you know, witches uh, using that word. But it's all the same, all the same energy. You know, people uh, who are intuitive and are connected with the other side and can use their willpower and use, not like their willpower, that's not the right word, use their intention and use tools in the world in order to ma manipulate energies for outcomes that are more to their own desire. So yeah, you, you, I, you guys are developing magical abilities really, or you don't need to think of it as magic. If you don't like to go there, you can just think of it as developing your intuition. You guys are going to be getting intuitive hits coming in. And these cats definitely want you to trust those. When you get a feeling, when you hear something whispering in your ear, when you get a, a dream that seems so real that you know, it's more than a dream. Trust that. Absolutely. Trust that w with these black cats. Absolutely. And the Knight of Swords, he's in reverse here. Let's take a look. This guy is like charging into battle on 
some kind of bird of prey. That looks almost, it's almost like he's like riding a raptor, right? But he's in reversed. So to me, this really means that you have maybe in the past really relied on mental activity, on logic, on reason, and making like quick judgments, but not based on your intuition, based on your mind. Um, you know, almost like, like I, I'm imagining somebody like, you know, piling up data in a spreadsheet. If you've always like felt you needed more data to make a decision, or if you've always felt like you needed to like run mental algorithms, like, you know, syllogisms and stuff and like for almost like formal logic. If you've been kind of like that in the past, really left brain, you're being asked to kind of let that go. Put it on pause. It's not that you're going to completely like abandon your mind because we don't want that either. We don't want to be unbalanced. But if you've been skewing to to left brain, you want to put that on pause for a little bit so you can develop your intuition. You can de develop your right brain. You can really sink deep into your your feminine intuition, you know, yin, you know, that that dark power of, of the yin yang, the, the black side is yin, and that's the feminine energy. And it's the unknown. It is it is the seat of magic as I see it. And so put aside the white half of the yin yang. Put aside your left brain for now, put him on the back burner, you can come back to him uh, when it's time. But right now, like these cats, really, <laughs> really want you to sink deep, deep, deep into your, your intuition. And if this is absolutely going to work out well for you, you got the world. And this world card is so abundant looking rabbits to me, or I don't know if this is a rabbit or a hare, maybe it's a hare, um, are really associated with abundance, you know, because you've all heard the expression, you know, multiplying like rabbits <laughs> and you know we associate rabbits with easter i don't actually don't know how that got started i bet there's a story there maybe you guys want to look that up i feel like that's somehow significant but i don't know what it is um leaning into your intuition is going to bring you new worlds that i feel like you guys have been dreaming of but thinking were impossible for example maybe all your life you thought it would be really cool if you could cast spells and have them actually come to fruition. Or maybe you hear about people communicating with their guides and you've never heard anything from your guides. You think maybe you don't have them and, but you would like to, or maybe you want to be able to have, you know, psychic uh, telepathic communication with your partner, your, with one of your soulmates, but you think that maybe that's impossible. I feel like, Whatever you guys want, whatever you want that has anything to do with being psychic, being intuitive, or being magical, whatever you want and you feel like it's impossible, if you can just lean in, dive in, sink into the ocean of your intuition, that you're going to you're gonna get whatever you're, you set your intentions for. So be careful about what kind of intentions you set right now, actually, because... <sighs> so so much magic this 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 magician this witch is whatever she sets out whatever intention she sets whatever spell she sets out to cast they're going to manifest they're going to manifest and they're going to be birthed into the world in in a whole new i think really tangible way so go with the flow guys and don't be afraid to sink deep 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 down almost like going down a rabbit hole be careful with the rabbit holes you know People, when we first start waking up, it's really easy to go Googling and then we get down these weird rabbit holes. Like, for example, my husband has this weird phenomena where random people come up to him and start talking to him about the reptile people that live underground. And it, it's like this, like this has happened to him several occasions. Like, and some people have been long term trying to convince him about the, the reptile people that live inside the earth and I feel like these people who are really obsessed with the reptilians are it's like they're they're waking up they're waking up to a bigger broader more you know mystical world but they're like stuck in this rabbit hole where they're obsessing about the reptilians and obsessing about really being paranoid about it it's like they they found one thing that is 
unusual and weird and seems impossible and they're fixating on that i really think like that's like getting stuck in a rabbit hole so just watch out for that guys you don't want to get stuck in some kind of weird rabbit hole where you like obsess about the secret government or about the reptilians or about how the aliens are out to get you don't don't do that you want to be connecting with your intuition and with your, your spirituality and your psychic abilities in like a broad broad balanced sense just don't get stuck on some weird like idea if and you'll know you can trust trust your intuition on like what's a rabbit hole that is not worth going down because if it makes you feel anxious and if it's keeping you up at night and if it's uh really just giving you bad bad vibes like trust those bad vibes if like even if there are reptile people living under the earth that are like brainwashing humans you don't need to be obsessing over that that like that's what I mean right it's almost irrelevant whether it's this rabbit hole is true or not if you're obsessing over it and if it's costing you sleep and freaking you out that's not worth putting your energy there it's not focus on what is good what is positive what keeps you moving forward what brings you love and joy um that is where you want to be putting the energy of your intuition and this is really cool because I pulled the five of cups this morning for myself and that was the message I was getting, right? Usually with the five of cups, that's what you get. Don't focus on all the bad. You got to be focusing on the good. Um, and remember that whatever you're resonating with, you will be creating more of. So people who are fixating on rabbit holes that are keeping them paranoid and afraid, that's just going to perpetuate being paranoid and afraid. You want to be shifting your energy to be focusing on things that make you feel awesome so i think that is the only pitfall here with the world card i don't think you guys will get stuck in weird rabbit holes i think you might maybe go down them a little bit but like alice you'll come right back out you know you don't want to get stuck in the rabbit hole go down take a look around come right back out um that is definitely what these cats so curious so curious like the cats um cats actually think a lot about cats they're really curious. They'll take a look at something, but you know, I imagine if a cat would go take a look in some hole in the ground, take a look around, but that cat would probably come right back out as soon as it, the hole started to look freaky, right? The cat isn't stupid. It's not going to hang out in some bad vibe, weird hole in the ground. It's going to check it out and come out. That's what you guys want to do. Trust your intuition exactly like a cat. Be curious like a cat, but also be cautious and careful. Watch out for any black cats crossing your path, guys. I, I love seeing black cats cross my path. I mean, I live with two of them, so I've got black cats crossing my path constantly. Um, you know, maybe that cancels out all of the bad luck. Maybe I've got really good luck because of my cats. <laughs> all right, guys, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I hope to see you again soon. Hey, pile three, welcome to your reading. You guys got the rhinoceros card. The subtext on it is moderation. As you can see, it is fiery, fiery and powerful. So passionate. Look at that dude on it just sitting there blazing away. I feel like this is your guys' like heart energy. You guys have so much to give to the world. But I feel like maybe you feel like you always are are too much. You're afraid of putting yourself out there because maybe you feel like you overwhelm people. Or that you're too much for people. And that the way you express yourself might be rather, not necessarily abrasive, but I feel like you guys probably have some really unique like fashion or hairstyles some way of presenting yourself to the world that is very different and really like lets your inner self like shine out. And the message from the rhinoceros here is to find like the middle way to find your moderation, but not in a way that like collapses yourself. You don't want to be watering yourself down. That's not what this is about or editing yourself. It's to temper temper all of this passion and powerful energy in a way that is more balanced. I'm really reminded with this rhino here of like 
20 years ago when I like when I was a kid in, in school, I did had to do some project where I had to like flip through magazines and find an ad and, you know, analyze the ad. And I remember seeing this cigarette ad uh, and it was like a rhino walking on ice and the ice was like cracking a little bit. But, you know, because he's a rhino, he was trying to like get over there without uh, without cracking the ice. And it just said like think light because I guess it was light cigarettes. And th that has like always stuck in my mind that that's that image of that rhino trying to tread carefully and just going think light think light you know don't don't be heavy don't fall through the ice if you think light uh, you know i'll i'll become light and make it across this ice without falling into the water that's what i'm feeling a feeling you guys are all about here and taking a look at your tarot cards you got the page of cups the king of cups and the empress so much powerful passionate energy the page of cups and the king of cups you guys are man there's so much like childlike wonder and glee and the a willingness to step out into new ventures without knowing you guys i feel can really step into the unknown you're not too worried about having a plan you know having a detailed plan you're not worried about knowing how everything's going to work out you can step out there but you also have the maturity of the King of Cups where you have mastery of other people's other people's emotions, not really in a manipulative way, in a way where like you guys not only like are the life of the party, you guys like are the party. You bring the party. I, I can't help but think, I don't know if any of you guys are into like Myers-Briggs, also known as like MBTI, like personality typing. Um, you got, this makes me think of ENFPs, which basically means somebody who is like really extroverted, really intuitive, um, really feelings based, uh, but also has an underlying ability to think critically when they choose to, but that's something that they step into as like a, a tool. And also somebody usually with a good memory, but ENFPs tend to really live in the moment and really, really live in their imagination. And they are the they are the party like i'm married to an enfp <laughs> they are just the the kind of people that everybody loves everybody wants to be around like you guys can be friends with every, with everybody but you may maybe you guys feel that because you have this ability to be friends with everybody you don't actually value some of these friendships because you guys are probably looking for something really really authentic and you're not always finding it. Maybe you guys feel this like pressure to constantly be, to constantly continue to be the life of the party, or maybe you feel like almost like a compulsion to like shoot your, your really enthusiastic, passionate energy out there. And maybe sometimes you don't feel like it, but do you ever feel like you get thrown into a room full of people or a situation, some kind of social, social situation, and you almost feel like everybody else is like pulling energy out of you. Like they're hard to describe. I feel like you feel compelled to put on almost like a social performance when you're in a social, social situation. Not that you're doing this like in order to impress people or to deliberately be authentic or trick people it's it's almost like that is just part of your nature you just naturally respond to social environments like that and maybe sometimes you want to stop doing that maybe you want to sit quietly in the corner and you guys this empress card here so i really view the emperor and the empress as the culmination points of the kings and queens of all the four suits. So the Empress, you know, she embodies the queens, the queen of cups, the queen of swords, the queen of wands, and the queen of pentacles. <laughs> I was trying to remember which one I hadn't mentioned yet. So I think this is where you guys are heading. Right now you're really in this like emotional, watery energy where you're always maybe, you're reacting like water. You're reacting, going with the flow, going where the universe is shooting you. Um, but in order to be the Empress, this actually links up perfectly with this rhinoceros card with moderation. <sighs> moderation is it's really like a temperance card. 
if you guys want to find the stability and the ultimate success and just the sovereignty of the empress, like who doesn't want to be the empress? Don't you want to be the empress? She's got it all. She has, she is the pinnacle of, you know, the feminine aspect of human embodiment on earth. This is, this is it. This is it guys. You want to, you, you guys want to be the empress. And so you need to learn to balance all of this water energy, all of this emotional energy and almost this water energy is a little bit passive kind of like maybe that's how you guys feel why you're like reactive in social situations because you just you are going with the flow of the energy in the room so you guys are going to want to branch out a little bit and you know symbolically symbolically go through the energies of all of the other suits the swords bring in some mental perspective bring in a little bit of logic and a little bit of a detachment and dispassionateness so that you can balance out balance out all this water energy also bring in pentacles energy bring in groundedness and present being present in the moment and in your physical surroundings i feel like you guys live in your imagination so much that you're not always like aware like really really groundedly aware of your environment around you and like instead of taking in your environment with your five senses you actually are like filtering your uh, filtering that all through your imagination it's like you your eyeballs are seeing everything around you but instead of like literally just looking at it you see it and then you abstract it with your imagination and then that's how you experience it from there it's like you've got this like filtering layer which is great that's what makes you guys so just bombastic and awesome and passionate and creative and intuitive and that's really your strength but you know all things in moderation, all things in balance. When that gets out of balance, you can start to feel dissatisfied, almost like nothing is ever enough and feeling disconnected from your, from your environment, from your life. So bring in that pentacles energy to be grounded, maybe do grounded meditation, you know, just imagine you're a tree, deep, deep roots sinking down into the earth and branches going up into the, into the sky. If you can do that, like standing in a river or just with your feet in the dirt, but if you know up on it, if you're in a high rise in an apartment, just, you know, sit with your feet on the floor, like sit in a chair with your feet on the floor and just just imagine those roots going out from your feet down into the earth. You know, you don't actually need to be standing on the earth for that to work. Um, and then what's left and, you know, bring in the energy of the suit of wands. Being able to magnetize what you want, but also let go what you don't want. You know, if you want to be the king or the queen of wands, they're only bringing in what is useful and resonant and relevant to them. Everything else that is not theirs goes, you know, they don't, they don't attract shit that they don't want. They only attract what they want. <sighs> There's lots of different ways you could think about this. Um, it's, it's weird. I've never really talked about personality types in, in tarot readings, but if, if that seems interesting to you, um, like look up whatever personality system is interesting to you. Uh, a few years ago, I got really into like Myers-Briggs. So look that up, uh, read about that. Um, you can take the tests, but you know, they're not always that accurate. So if you take the test and the answer you get is doesn't resonate with you, well, you know, read about the different types and figure out which one you are that way. Um, there's also big five, which kind of tells you what kind of, uh, you know, how extroverted you are, how open you are, um, how neurotic you are, stuff like that. And, uh, you can also do the Enneagram, which is like nine different types and really tells you if you're operating, uh, if you naturally operate in your emotions or in your mind or in your like physical body. Um, other things, if you want something more like, if you want something like astrologically based, there's human design. I'll try to list these different types in the description box. I know it's, try it's hard to try and figure out, you know, what I just said after when I just say it quickly like that. So just kind of follow whichever one of those seems interesting to you and dive into it. Don't get too caught up on like, oh, I am this or I am that because these kind of these personality systems are really interesting and can be like really, really helpful in helping us understand ourselves and other people. For example, for me, uh, 
I used Myers Briggs to learn about other people. And, you know, I walk around and I can, court, I can sort of categorize people into these, you know, 16 different personality types. And on the one hand, I don't, I don't want to use that to make judgments about them or to assume things about them, but it helps me, you know, because I'm not actually very good at, um, or I wasn't, I used to not be very good at understanding how other people operate because I'm quite idiosyncratic, I guess. And it really took me a long time to realize how other people actually operate and, you know, using personality systems helped me really learn a lot about other people. So, you know, take them all with a grain of salt, use them as far as they're useful, but don't, you know, take them too seriously and certainly don't use them to like make judgments or make big life decisions. Um, but they're definitely, they can absolutely be fun and interesting and useful. So follow that as far as you feel like it. Um, I mentioned all of that because I really feel like you guys need to be getting in touch with different aspects of your personality, different aspects of yourself and bringing it all together, bringing in, if you feel like you've been really one-sided, you need to find the middle path. You need to find the middle way, a balanced path using all of your strengths, but also aware of your weaknesses. And that'll allow you to kind of work on your challenges and strengthen areas of your life, areas of yourself that are undeveloped or that you've been maybe ignoring or sweeping under the rug until now, because this rhino guys wants you to be able to balance all of this power and all of this energy and all this passion with, you know, grounded action with awareness, with, with compassion for others and yourself and ability to discern what is useful for you and what isn't anything that's not yours has to go. And if you can find that balance, that moderation, that middle way, you guys will be the empress. And for you guys, I think I'm going to pull one moon card. I don't read these cards upside down. You are good enough. Full moon in Virgo. Aw, what was I saying earlier about how you feel almost compelled to be putting yourself out there in social situations all the time to be the life of the party? Maybe you guys are overcompensating. Maybe you feel like if, you, if you're if you not the life of the party that people won't like you or that you always need to be really dramatic in order to get the recognition that you need. But that's not the case, guys, at all. That's not the case at all. You can just be yourself. You can be the quiet introvert if you want to be. You can stay home and you know, you can have one friend over if that's your best friend. Have one friend over for coffee. You don't need to be running around being the life of the party every day, guys. You're enough just as you are. Just as you are. Don't don't let those don't let those pressures pull behaviors out of you if you don't want to authentically express that behavior. You may find it useful when you're going out in public or, you know, whenever there's humans around to like a mat, like to shield yourself. Imagine, you know, a basic way of doing that. If you've, if you don't have any experience with shielding, just imagine like a bubble, like a, a bubble going up around you and intend that, that that bubble is going to prevent people from pulling behaviors out of you. Intend that you will only express what you authentically want to express, that you do not have to rise to anybody else's expectations so you can imagine the bubble whatever it is if you feel like however, however however you identify this experience if you feel like other people expect so much of you if you feel like other people are you know peer pressuring you into doing something intend that that bubble keeps all of that out and the only thing that gets out of the bubble from you from the inside is your own authentic expression this is all really related to throat chakra too if you're if you feel like you need to authentically express yourself, um, take a look at your throat chakra. You know, you can do, you can look up throat chakra meditations online. You can find music that is designed to attune to your throat chakra. Um, there's so many different ways of doing, of working on your chakras. You kind of have to find out what works for you. Um, I would just say kind of, you know, set that intention, you know, ask the universe for help with your throat chakra and see what comes to you, you know, go Googling, go, go clicking links, you know, go exploring and you never know what will come up. You will find the help that you need on that 
And I think I'm going to leave it at that, guys. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.